Welcome back. You're watching Beyond the Headline. Now, for the second day in a row, the Supreme Court rebuked the centre over its claims on same-sex marriages. A constitution bench uh, headed by Chief Justice Chandrachud is hearing a batch of petitions seeking legal recognition of same-sex marriages in India. The hearing has uh, garnered everyone's attention and made headlines as it could possibly be a landmark case for LGBTQ plus rights in the country. Now, day two of the hearing began with the center filing an affidavit to make all states party to the case and a request to adjourn the hearing till they send their views. The court denied that request for adjournment. Another argument made by the center that was also swiftly rejected by the bench was that same-sex marriages are an urban elite concept to which the bench replied that just because more people are coming out of the closet in urban areas does not mean it's an urban phenomenon. They have asked the government to substantiate that claim through data. Uh, the National Commission for Protection of Child Rights, or NCPCR, had also objected to the matter, saying adoption of children by same-sex couples endangers the child as gay couples make bad parents. The court denied these contentions and said there is no such psychological impact on the child. The hearing finally concluded for today with the bench mulling over possible changes that can be made to the Special Marriage Act. Of course, all of this is a continuous process. Meanwhile, there is a lot of conversation and debates on how different stakeholders see this. There's the legal point of view, social point of view, religious point of view. We want to hear from those who are going to be impacted or are impacted directly same-sex couples and what it means for them to be legally married in this country. Dr. Roop Gursahania, a neurologist, uh, is with us on the show. He and his partner of 20 years, Neil Pitt, a journalist, are both joining us today. They got married in London in 2022. They're now waiting for their union to be recognized in India. Thank you so much. Roop and Neil for speaking with us today on Beyond the Headline. We thought it's important to get the point of view of those who are going through this process and perhaps looking in astonishment about how everyone has a point of view. Dr. Roop, let me begin with your take. Why is it so important to get married? We are living in an age where a lot of couples are saying marriage is a failing institution. We're together. Why do we need a certificate to show our love? In that context, why do you think it's important to be married? Um, if you look on marriage as uh, just being about uh, sex and procreation, yeah, well, well, you don't need it. I, I agree. But you need it for uh, uh, a lot of other stuff. It's uh, something that validates our relationship. It uh, makes it legally uh, enforceable in many ways. For me as a doctor, I know that if I am seriously ill or Neil is seriously ill, uh, and uh, one of us needs to take decisions. How how would the other be permitted to do that? I I think that's that's for me that was probably the one thing that uh, led me to uh, well make the trip to London. What does that trip to London mean? Uh, you know legally. I mean, let me get Neil on this. What, what does that trip to London mean legally? And of course, you'll have been kind enough to share those moments with us. We'll show that on screen to our viewers as well. They all had a ceremony there. Does it make a difference to your status here in India, Neil? You know what? The whole point was we've spent 20 years together. You know, We've took, taken care of his parents. We've taken care of our parents, and both of them were very supportive of our relationship. And then we thought, like, I'm 50 plus, he's 60 plus. I mean, if not now, when? So we just thought, okay, fine, we'll just go and get married in London. And one of the reasons why we did that was very simple. You know, it was just celebration of love and togetherness, if I can say that. You know, it's as simple as that. Also, as Roop rightly pointed out, now he actually spoke about from the medical point of view, you know, when he talks about who would take the decisions if one of us was seriously ill. But it's a day-to-day -day challenge, as it's been raised in the Supreme Court and everything has been mentioned there. I mean, we can't open a simple bank account together. We can't have a house together. We can't apply for a home loan together. 
I mean, mm. medical insurance, everything, you know, every step in life. To nominate him uh, on my uh, bank accounts, uh, well, they don't have any uh, way that we can be accountable. So, I mean, if one of us passes away, what happens to the other? You know, it's a very simple question. So, yeah, that's what we thought, you know, I mean. And then we Just, got when married. you see, and we are here. And let me tell you, if, as and when the ST recognizes same-sex marriages here, we will get married in India as well. Band baja barat, everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just lovely. That's lovely. Thank you for sharing that, um, Dr. Roop. Today, when you see all of the conversation, the debate, and I know it's it's sub judice, this is a legal matter, and that legal debate is on. But when, when you see everyone debating it, um, what are the thoughts going through your mind? Uh, because one of the contentions and concerns is that is India culturally ready for this? Are Indian religions culturally ready for this? Because um, religion also and culture plays a huge part in marriage. This is being dubbed as an urban elite construct, which doesn't really mean anything for the wide mass of this country. What do you feel when you hear that, Dr. Roop? Okay, so the, let me dispose of that urban elite thing, because uh, that's something that's that's got data. Uh, as far as we know from across the world, including India, uh, about 10% of the population clearly does not fall into the heteronormative uh, construct. So uh, various, I mean, it's it's a whole spectrum. That's one thing that we can, that, that there's enough data. I mean, we don't even need to argue about that. And uh, then about, well, we are, we are India, we diverse, we, we are evolving, we are changing our attitudes. And if you look at, uh, surveys that look at people's attitudes, uh, they are changing. I, I can point out uh, links to stuff that's been already published. But uh, attitudes are changing. I can see that in my own family. I can see that around me. So I don't need, uh, I mean, I don't need uh, evidence, but that evidence too is there. I believe that for my generation, coming out was impossible. And uh, I can see people, my friends in their 20s, 30s, they are out and proud. And the families are part of it. And so obviously, this is part of a natural progression. And uh, I guess the Supreme Court uh, realizes that. Neil, um, you know, the argument is that this is something that Parliament has to decide, not the courts. I'd like to take on that, uh, Tamanna. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, please go ahead. We're listening. Yeah, yeah. Now, the thing is, it's so easy. Look at the timing and look at the way these guys are making arguments, you know. The Supreme Court read down Section 377 in 2018, okay? Five years down the line, and when the, sec the Supreme Court actually struck it down, they actually directed the Indian government, they actually directed the government telling them that it's now your duty to sensitize people across the country through advertisements, through media, through television, through print, through audios, through radio jingles, and bring about awareness and sensitization in the country regarding LGBTQI, okay? Five years have gone down right now. Nothing has been done so far, you know? There was an RTI which was actually filed by one of the activists asking the government what happened to this Supreme Court's directive. The answer you'll be surprised was three ministries from the government, the law ministry, then you had the Ministry of Home Affairs, you had the IMB ministry, and all of them literally shrug off the entire thing saying this does not fall under our purview. Now, I have a very mm. basic question to all these guys raising, you know, nasty voices. What were you doing for five years? So under whose purview is this? 
It's as simple so, as that. Yes. No, so, we can't so, wait for so, five years. Yes. You can't wait for five years. Dr. Rupa is saying, mean, I can't wait for five exactly. years. Exactly. So what no, have you been I can't wait for parliament. Doing? I mean, so what has the legislature been doing so far? All they've been doing no, is but, fighting. No, but, but, you know, okay, okay, the, the, the flip side to this, the flip side to this, because I, you know, I must play devil's advocate. The flip side oh, yes. to this, the question Absolutely. that has been raised, the question, you know, Neil, as a journalist, understands, and I'll come to Dr. Roop on this, the, the concerns that have been raised about adoptive rights, the concerns that have been raised uh, about uh, NCPCR has gone to court and said that it's going to be difficult to uh, because adoption will be the next logical step, right? If uh, you give marriage rights, will that be right for children? Uh, will that be the right environment for children? Concerns over what this does to the social structure in India, which is bound so closely to the family unit, to marriage, to in-laws, to families marrying into families, and how this could disrupt everything. Are we ready as a country for this kind of a leap, Dr. Roop? Right. So I think, again, these are issues that uh, evolve over time. And uh, uh, again, if you look at it, uh, families are, again, I said this right in the beginning, families are more than just sex and procreation. They're about responsibilities to each other, to children. And I think there's enough data from the rest of the world that once, uh, uh, I mean, uh, same-sex marriages are recognized and adoption rights are recognized, nothing, nothing comes crashing down. Families become more diverse, they become uh, more real, and, uh, well, life goes on. Why do we you need know, to reinvent the wheel? I mean, people have already been down this road before. Other countries have done this. Yeah, but, you know, Neil, uh, that qu question to you, are we culturally ready as a nation? Because when laws are changed, it impacts everyone, and the ramifications can be very large. That one part. And do you think society is also ready to accept that kind of change? My family. Please. Yes, we are open and out to our entire family, the friends. society, friends, the building that we live in in Bandra. I mean, all our neighbors, I mean, it's one extended community. I mean, as somebody we rightly know. said, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. It's not something that one individual can do. I mean, let's not forget, you know, there was a time when sati and widowry marriage was something that was looked down upon and people protested. It took the courts to take that decision, and society has accepted today. I want you to share, as we wrap up, and I'll come to Neil first, what this journey has been like. I just, I just think the story of both of you all being together for 20 years, uh, you'll have had a ceremony in the UK, you're saying that if you're allowed, it will be with Ban Baja Bharat in uh, India. It must not have been easy. 20 years ago, Neil, you must have faced a lot, a lot of challenge to come out and say that I have the right to live the way I want to. Is this just another challenge that you're ready to face? Yes, this is a big challenge right now. And, you know, the 20, I mean, we've been together for 20 years, over 20 years, but I was out and proud at work, at home, and all over for the past, I don't know, the long this time that I know. So it's not been an easy journey, but yes, I mean, change is inevitable. And the basic thing is love is celebration. And that's what we should be looking at, you know, not this kind of hatred that I see today. You know, it's as simple as that, irrespective of the gender and sexuality. Yes, Dr. Roop, you want to come in on that? Yeah, so I, I won't deny that for me, uh, being in the closet was um, a decision that was forced on me by circumstances. And uh, once 377 went, that decision also faded away. Uh, I think in that sense, we had enough support from our friends and family that it, I don't know, I mean, everybody just accepted it as a natural thing. It was just part of life. We were together and that was it. 
And today, um, do you hope that you can solemnize legally, you know, your your relationship in this country? What are you hoping for, Dr. Roop? Yeah, I think it is uh, about due to happen. It's about due to happen. And then things will move on. Other things will happen. We are a constitutional democracy. It's the Supreme Court's business to interpret the Constitution and put it in the context of changing times. Yeah. I'm, I'm very proud of being an Indian and I'm proud of the fact that our software manual written how many years ago still works. It still works. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, wish you both the best and those hopes for a ban Baja Bharat, even as we cover and track the, the legal case as it snakes through our Indian legal system. Uh, we wanted to get your perspective to know why this is so important for same-sex couples to have the same right as everyone else. Thank you so much, Neil and Dr. Thank Roop, for joining Thank us. You. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And up next, we bring you the interview.